Um, That's what I'm wondering. We all do. <laughs> we all have YouTube channels. We all love video games, and we turn that into a passion at the same time. So, uh, you want to start down there? We'll sure. work our way this way. Introduce yeah. yourself, yeah. and tell everybody how many how many games are in your collection. Yeah. <laughs> are we gonna use the mic, or are we just gonna? Oh shit! I was projecting. <laughs> check, check. Yeah, you hear you pretty good. Hello. <laughs> Bob Saget. Every rose has. Now you have to start over. Check, check, check. That <laughs> is a little slow. What you said do? it wasn't. What did you think? I didn't no, do it. No, actually, it wasn't. Did you turn the microphone on? Is it plugged? Yeah, on? yeah. It's a hunt. Is it? Can I get tech support? This is a great angle. I, I love <laughs> this angle. This is right there the whole time. Did we pop out? We think plugged in good. We just, we just had it on. <laughs> this is the type of panel. <laughs> this is why we don't have nice things. Hello. Check. Hey guys, we gotta yell. So let's switch right. Right. No. I mean, work the minute. I've actually played video games for like Gary, years. Yeah. I, know how to I hold him responsible. It worked before. Let you blow. Hold on. There it goes. Oh, and actually, even though this blue light's on, it Whoa. wasn't on. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Yay! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, does that sound okay? Is it alright in the back? Sweet. Alright. Testing, testing. Alright. First of all, thank you to everybody for joining this panel. You know, I'm sure a lot of you probably don't know who the hell we are. We don't even know who the hell we are. I don't know who I am half the time. Uh, but yeah, no, my name's Matt. My uh, YouTube channel is called Retro Wolf 88. I've been doing YouTube since about early 2019. Um, I cover a lot of GameCube, I cover a lot of retro stuff. I do cover some modern stuff, but it's mainly on the retro side. Um, I do game room tours on my channel with other collectors and things like that. I uh, put a lot of production into the channel and uh, just have a lot of fun with it. But if you love GameCube, then you're, you'll probably enjoy my content because I do a lot of GameCube content. Tom, take it away. Oh, take it away. Tom. 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 So I'm Tom, the uh, the other half, not the better half of Do You Nerd, with my wife, Lady Lacey. We collect whatever we love. That's trademarked by Discard, but he's not here, so I'm using it. And we do uh, a variety channel, a lot of uh, convention coverage. We go to Renaissance festivals. We like to check out a lot of local stuff, really bring awareness of things like that. Other conventions, even if they're not video game specific, we like to focus on those, let people know there's all kinds of stuff out there for you to do. And uh, we like to do unboxings, we like to talk about the stuff that we collect, show off some of the, the toys that we love to open because we don't leave anything sealed. So a little bit of everything. And uh, yeah, we are very, very fortunate to be surrounded by so many people in this room and just in the community in general. How many games are in your collection? Oh, uh, I think we are up to 3,200. Woo! So, so, I mean, that's, that's nothing. Well, no, you got you have more than me? Yeah. I'm just a bit that's of... That's too many games. Just but, they're, but they're not, yeah, but they're not GameCube games. Not, yeah, not yeah. Right, right. <laughs> awesome. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Uh, my name's Paul Andrew Case. Middle name is Andy. That's why I get Pac-Man. And then I put the last name Case like a freaking idiot at the end of my YouTube channel. So now I'm Pac-Man Case, which is actually Paul Andrew Case Man Case. <laughs> Dumb, dude. And I can't go back once you start it. It stinks. Um, so uh, I've been doing YouTube probably about three years or so. Uh, I started off with my dad's NES collection uh, and still have it to this day, which is kind of where my collection uh, started. He was sci-fi all the way, so I mean, I was playing stuff like Defender, Galaxy 5000, which I think is a badass game. If you guys haven't played that one on NES, I love that game. Um, I currently have 4,300 and I just looked it up and it's probably wrong. I think it's like 20 games. And I'm gonna say right now, it's too many games. It's too many games, because I'm never ever gonna get to all of them. Enough, get those numbers higher. Yeah, those are Ricky numbers. Get them up. There you go. Uh, hey, uh, my name is Wolf. It's my actual name. I had a hippie mom, so it's a birthday present. Um, but yeah, I, I, my channel is uh, Blips and Pips. It's like me and my type of corgi named Pip, and he's the best ever. It's better than everything. <laughs> but no, uh, so yeah, I, I've been collecting games for like a, a while, like a pretty long while. But 
I'm not like super duper active, right? So I grew up like, and all my stuff came from flea markets. I never got anything new. So like a lot of people see my collection videos or whatever, they're like, oh, you must have like a million bajillion games. But like I actually did count them off. It's, it's, it's like a thousand games. It's a lot. Like a thousand's crazy. It's a lot of games. But like, you know, you talk to some people like, oh, I got like 32 billion games, you jerks. But yeah, I mean, I got like a thousand games, but like they're, they're all important to me. <laughs> you know, like I have Beavis and Butthead for Super Nintendo. That game is horrible, but I love that game. It's so good. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, a thousand games, but it's, it's like, it's hard, right? Because you gotta, you gotta find the games that mean something to you, yeah. but then like also it's like, you know, which one, you know, if you find something crazy, like are you gonna buy it just because it's crazy has a good price? You know, it's, it's a weird balancing act, right? But um, yeah, I mean, it's, that's kind of it's kind of where I'm at, it's a modest collection. It's a good, I mean, it's a good collection. It's a good collection. Um, so, this question will probably come up anyway, but why do you collect video games? Why? So, I mean, um, so the reason why I collect video games is because I want to keep I want to keep a piece of my childhood alive, right? I grew up with video games, you know. I grew up with the NES, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, and I went to the Nintendo 64 game, keep so on and so forth. Um, and I think the older we get, I'm sure everybody in this room will agree with me. The older we get, I truly think the older we get, the more important it is to stay in touch with our inner child. I really, I really do believe that. Um, so yeah, I mean that's really. Why I collect, and, and not to say video games are for kids, because obviously they're not. You know, we're, none of us are kids except Tom. Uh, he's just a big kid. But yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, and, and you know, it's a, it's a great way to relieve stress. You know, it's a great way to kind of uh, escape reality a little bit, because reality can suck sometimes, right? The real world can suck. Uh, but yeah, collecting is just, uh, it's fun. It's a lot of fun, especially when you're out in the wild and you find something you know, really awesome for a really good price. That feeling can't be beat. I'm sure a lot of you in this room have experienced that. It's, it's an awesome feeling. So why, why do I collect video games? Because I'm a grown man now, Dad, and I can do whatever I want. <laughs> um, no, I, you, you cover a lot of it, honestly. Uh, the whole preservation yeah, is, right. is a huge aspect for us. Uh, we love having these games in a physical form that you can ideally always return to and visit. You know, there are no servers going down, nothing's getting deleted. Sony or someone that they work with doesn't decide suddenly, you know what, you can't play that game anymore because we said so. Uh, so the preservation part of it is a big thing. And honestly, growing up, not really having a whole lot of games in, in our household, that's kind of the thrill of it now because now you get to go back and, and revisit all of those things that you missed out on. And so many times whenever I talk to other collectors, you hear someone say, oh, you know, we had a Super Nintendo, but I never played Sega Genesis. So now they're starting to get into all of these Sega Genesis games and it's a whole library of new to them 16-bit games. And I, I always love hearing that because that's part of the fun of, of collecting video games, finding that stuff that you never knew about before. There, there's always something else out there for you. So it's it's fun, short and simple. And, and because it's my money, I'll, I'll do what I want with it. <laughs> yeah, right. Damn good answer. <laughs> uh, I think I'll just kind of go off what Tom said. Um, when you have disposable income and you can use it where you want it, you want to do the things that you wanted to do when you were 10 that you couldn't do. Like, I want to go buy 800 gummy worms because that's what I wanted to do when I was 10, and I could go do it and not feel bad about it. Um, video games are kind of that same way. So my journey was a little different. I played games, but I was like everybody else. I played the Marios, I played the Sonics, and I, was, and I wasn't really hardcore. I didn't have some deep cuts in my collection library. Uh, and then I watched CJR, which was a big mistake. And that was... I think his channel is now at like nine years or 10 years, but to see the thrill of the hunt and then see him play this game you've never played before is like the coolest experience ever. There's so many games out there, not a single one of us has played all of them. And when you come on to some new experience that you've never had before, there's nothing like it. It's better than film, it's better than reading a book. Like when it takes you in on this freaking journey, this experience that I don't think any of us ever knew that this industry was gonna blow up as it is right now. 
And I'm a huge physical collector, so I'm not a huge fan of digital just because it will be taken away from you. I'm not telling you like if, it will be taken away from you at some point. And so for us to curate a badass physical collection that hopefully we have the next 30, 40 years to play, that's why I collect. I think that's, that's important. So the future is, is digital, these guys are all wrong. <laughs> no, uh, so when I started collecting, like it, it's, it kind of plays off of what you guys are saying where I started out where it's like, I'm one of those games that I didn't have, right? You know, it's like, okay, I had Super Mario World, but I didn't have Super Mario RPG. You know, I had Final Fantasy 2, I didn't have Final Fantasy 3. So it's like, I want to get these things I didn't get to experience, but then things changed, right? So we're like, we're all old, that sucks. <laughs> we're all old, right? So, you know, I had one of my friends had his kids, they came out, you know, barbecue came over. And I remember his son, this kid Gabe, and he was like, you know, 10. He's like, Mr. Wolf, what are these games, you know? And I was like, oh. So we sat down and we played, what did we play? It was like Super Mario World. He'd never played Super Mario. And like, he was all about it. I was like, this is, okay, cool. So I remember that day, I had an extra Game Boy uh, Advance SP and I had the Super Mario World Game Boy Advance game. I just gave it to him. I was like, well, I mean, you know, I, they have a value, whatever. But I was like, dude, you need, to, you need this. Like, you love this, you need this. So now that I'm like, I've gotten to the point where most of the games I really wanted, like to fill in, I've gotten. So now, if and when I find doubles, usually I end up giving them or, you know, selling them very cheaply to friends who have kids who have never done it. And like, that's kind of where I'm at now. Cause like, you know, I don't, you know, I don't need whatever, you know, game, insert expensive game here. But like, you know, when you see someone who has never got to experience Sonic 3 for whatever reason, because like the weird music copyright thing, and like, then they play it like, wow, this is like really cool. Like, yeah, it is, so. <laughs> but like, you know, like, it, it's cool now to like have friends, especially like friends with kids that are like, they're now getting old enough to experience these things, to come over to my game room and like, oh, let's go play Mr. Wolf's Crazy Games and like, you know, let's make a day of it barbecue. And that's kind of where, that's kind of where I'm, I'm at nowadays. That's awesome. By the way, Mr. Wolf's Crazy Games, that's a, that's a title for a series <laughs> right there. Mr. Wolf's Crazy Games. <laughs> Uh, so we all have game rooms, right? I bet everybody in here has a game room or a game den or a shelf that's like your favorite piece. Liar, liar <laughs> over here. Um, so another well, kind of last one, we kind of opened up to Q&A and we've got some trivia questions and some giveaways to go uh, here. But talk to me a little bit about the design of your game rooms. like. Why is your game room the way it is, and what would you do to change it? So, my game room started off, you know, with those cheap-ass Walmart shelves. You, buy, you guys know the ones I'm talking about, the bookshelves, and the games are, like, way back in the shelf. They don't, it doesn't look good. I think most of us start off with stuff. Where the shelf's, like, bending? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> bends in the middle, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, and they only give you three shelves, so you got this giant gap, you know, unless you stack them like this and nobody wants to do that. Yeah, you got a metal Jesus room. Yeah, right. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I discovered, I don't know if anybody in here is familiar with a YouTuber named Game Dave. Um, he did a video about a product called Wall Control, and I'm not sponsored by him. It's going to sound like I'm sponsored by him, but I promise I'm not. Uh, so Wall Control is a company, uh, actually not far from here, they're based out of Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, basically they sell metal pegboard panels that you can install on your wall and you can buy customized shelving. It's very sturdy. You can get it in all kinds of different colors. It's really easy to install. Um, and so I've, I've gone crazy with wall control and I've basically filled almost my entire game room with wall control because you can fit a lot of games on a single panel. You can space the shelves out however you want. Uh, there's a lot of different accessories you can get. So it's a great product. And that's enabled me to really maximize the space in my game room. So um, I recommend everybody checks out Wall Control, and they really need to pay me. They really do. Uh, but yeah, I mean that's that's really you know how I do it. Well, let's see, I've I've uh, I've had a couple of game rooms actually, and. I think that everyone has probably been through this at one point or another. You, you've had to give up your game rooms, you know, a kid is born, something happens, you, you gotta get rid of the stuff. And honestly, this lady right here, she wanted me to have a game room so bad that 
She even had her dad come over because I'm 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 crap at building anything. You know, it's like here's here, it's three steps and it's already upside down. But her dad came over, helped me build some shelves. So we just built some shelves right onto the wall, just plain as can be, just standard lumber. And uh, when we bought a house together, she made sure that there was a space for a game room. So we got a nice house built in the 60s, which is fantastic because it has two living rooms and, you know, you, you don't entertain like that anymore. Right. So uh, not, not like that, you know. So now you entertain with games and people come over and you hang out in the game room. Little did I know that uh, she was just buttering me up to get her own room full of toys, <laughs> but it still worked out for the best. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we've set it up. It's got a nice den feel to it. There are some cute shelves that we keep, consoles that don't get a whole lot of play, that uh, kind of separate the room, give you a nice seating area, and then the rest is pretty much just walls taken up with shelves and games and everything else. So it, it gets a little busy yeah. in there. You know, there's no wall left, but, uh, but it, it comes together really nice. And it's, uh, it's always fun to have that flow in the room because it kind of it kind of curves around to have people walk through and start picking things out that they like about the room you know either going through the games checking out the, the few things that are on the wall or anything like that any of the fun little knickknacks that get on the shelves and seeing their reaction so you get that that almost museum feel so uh, we'll get some ticket prices for you guys by the end of the day let you know the hours and come on over get in it it's got paper um, and stuff on it. Yeah. So, so it's crazy. So one of my most asked comments on my YouTube videos are, where did you get those shelves? Um, and so I got Ikea, I think they're called Nedby shelves. Starts with a G, but it's Swedish, so I don't know how to say it. Uh, and the, the problem though, is that they're individually placed shelves and you have to put those little pegs in each one and all you can put on there is DVD or video games. You can't do any other big collecting on it. So I bought 40 of them because I didn't think that I would have any other things in my game room when I set it up in the first place. And I came from like a smaller house. Uh, I had a closet that had my original collection in it. Literally I opened up the closet and I, up top I had some of my uh, NES games. My Genesis stuff was all stacked on top of it. And I hated it, we moved into our new house the wife was like, okay, yeah, you can have a game room, which I was like, all right, that's awesome. I married the right one. Uh, and uh, getting in to that one, I was able to literally like blue, like, like it was like a blueprint in my head of like what I wanted the game room to look like. And I already made a mistake by purchasing those stupid ass shelves, but everybody wants them and now they're discontinued. And I find that that happens a lot with uh, media shelving. Like there's something you'll fall in love with or there's something that we really like and then it's gone. Maybe you want a second one. Maybe you want it to flank another side. Um, and then the other question I get is uh, the Kallax shelves that Ikea had. It's like the squares, like all the cubes. Very popular for people that have collection, but video games don't fit in it very well. Like you have to, you have to stack them across and then on top at the same time. Um, so I'm actually making a huge change in my video collecting and it was, it was a video I watched on toy collecting a while back, but everybody has three collections. You have your first collection, where you were either a kid or you started to get into video games in the first place. Then you have your second collection, where you make all your mistakes. That's the one where you, you bought too much, or you, uh, you collected stuff that you were not passionate about, and you just threw stuff in your game room, stuff was just shelf filler. And then you have collection 3.0, where like your head's clear, you know what you want to go after. Uh, every single thing that you, that's in that game room matters to you. And I think that takes everybody a long time. Like you have to go through those mistakes to finally get there on the collection. I'm now at 3.0, I'm gutting those shelves and I'm literally making an accent wall where I can throw up some of my favorite artwork and then I'm going to put my games in drawers and not on display anymore. Which I think is a very unique change for some people because for a long time, I liked to look at the shit on the shelves. Like, I really did enjoy seeing those spines, like, uh, but I hate it. Uh, if you guys have not checked out uh, Retro Rivals, uh, they're an awesome couple. Um, 
they're doing it right. They've, they've like, they've faced everything on their walls. They've made space for it. Uh, the, be uh, the better half, Jen, uh, she's done uh, artwork, custom artwork in the game room. Um, huge inspiration. But I think at this point, I just want things to be less clutter. I think it's really easy when we collect that it's just, I bought stuff, but I didn't think where I was going to put it. So you just go home and it's just there. So uh, I hope that my collection 3.0 comes out and check out the videos because I'm going to start on it this next year. You're going to see me gut the game room, so I'm kind of scared. I don't know what I'm going to do. So anyone with a game room, game shelf, game whatever, like it evolves, right? So you, know, you start out with, with one thing and then it keeps getting bigger and bigger. So when I started, I, I had my original collection of stuff and it wasn't much at all. And so I, was, I had this grandiose idea of like, what am I going to do? You know, at this point it was a game shelf or a game room. So, you know, I love working with my hands and stuff. I'm real mathematical minded. Um, so I had a friend of mine who came over, we bought wood, stained it, lacquered it. It was awesome. I made this shelf, a beautiful shelf, wooden shelf. And I made each shelf the right size for the games. I have like my long boxes. I have, um, I like the uh, universal game cases. So they make stuff. Um, for Super Nintendo and Sega and all that and all the stuff I didn't have complete box I had shelves for those DVD size um, They make these cases for Game Boy games that are like the DS cases same size and you can get all the art from Universal uh, Game cases they had in the cover project and so I mean it's like a perfect shelf and it was amazing And I, I built it and I put all the games in there and like I had plenty of room I'm like oh this shelf's gonna last me for the last like, two weeks <laughs> I was like, well, no. there we go. Because, you know, you, you walk into some place and it's like, oh, I'm, here's my Sega Saturn collection for 100 bucks. And, like, it's games you maybe don't want. You know, you said 2.0, right? Yeah. But you're like, well, i got to put it on the shelf now. So then I, I got into, like, my first, like, like, my, like a real game room. And so, you know, then you go the Ikea route because you're like, oh, I'm not going to build a wooden shelf for everything. But it's kind of funny because, you know, it, it's like you say, as you start out, you're putting games on there because you want to just have like this cool thing to look at. But then it starts getting where it's like, okay, do I want to look at the spine for, you know, whatever, Rocco's Modern Life? Or do you want to like have like a cool figure or collector's edition? Yeah. Or like, I'm huge into guidebooks. And bad thing about these these Billy Bookshelf from, from Ikea is, you know, the shelf's been. But if you put them on the bottom row, you know, you're okay, you're not gonna bend there, just the extra support. But now all your guidebooks are, on the ground, and yeah, I'm short, so it's cool for me, but everyone else is like, oh, check out my guidebooks, you're like, hey, where, and you know, so, it, it, you end up planning a lot more, and then that's what starts arguments with, with your significant other, because <laughs> you go through, and like, you have your tape measure, you're like, okay, the bookshelf is 26 inches, and then you go to Ikea, and then you just start lying, and, and yelling, and <laughs> it's terrible, but like, that's, you know, as far as like, you know, what, what was the mistake? What could I change? What could be different? It's like, I wish I had the foresight of planning better. You know, like, I, I wish I hadn't built that super cool shelf, or if I did, I built them all super cool. Or, you know, whatever. And I measured twice before buying, <laughs> and, and all those things. I also wish I, I maybe didn't buy an arcade machine, because those are huge. But, uh, no, I mean, that's, that's kind of the way it is, though. It's, it's always going to change, but, you know, you got to be fluid. And I think it sounds like we're all changing our game rooms anyway. Yeah. So. Collection 3.0. Yeah, 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 yeah. So 3.0 is the, is the goal. That's, I'm going to use that from now on. It makes me sad that you want to get rid of your arcade. I really don't. That's a lie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I figured it's fine. I think it's the coolest thing ever. Um, awesome. So we have uh, some giveaway items here, but we've got a trivia, some trivia questions, right? Did you think of yours? Yes. Okay. <laughs> on the fly. Yeah. On the fly. Do you think of one? I can. Good luck. You got <laughs> 10 minutes. <laughs> All right. Matt, go after it. And you can show everybody what you want to give away, too. Yeah. So, All right. So here's how we're going to do this. I'm going to ask the question. If you know the answer, raise your hand. Whoever raises their hand first gets to answer. If you get it wrong, well, if we give them another guess. Or go yeah, on no, you get another guess. All right. So I'm giving away uh, Snake Rattle and Roll Roll on the NES, which is a pretty fun little game. It's a game a lot of people don't really talk about. So, all right, my question is really easy. So I'm making it easy for you guys. All right, what is Mario and Luigi's last name? This man right here. Mario. You got it. <laughs> Mario. Mario. Wait, wait, I wait, yeah, like canon last name. Oh. Or film last night. <laughs> this guy. Oh, yeah, you're going to get challenged. <laughs> you're going to get challenged. Physical challenge. Physical challenge. 
All right, well, uh, I wasn't quite sure what to bring, so I just brought a couple of things. We've got just uh, some random Super Power Club cards. There's uh, Battletoads on Game Boy, X-Men on Game Gear, and Super Donkey Kong on Super Famicom. Whatever thing you want, go for it. Question I have, well, it's, it's probably not going to be that easy, so uh, don't make me look like, a, like the jerk. I was thinking, can anybody name the three games in the unofficial Quintet Trilogy on Super Nintendo? Okay, this is oh shit, Tom. This is, this, this is crashing and burning, so I'm going to do something. Damn, damn. You made Take it something cool. off. Yeah. Come on, man. I said, soon yeah, it will be easy. <laughs> you got it? Do you know it? I think uh, he's, he's going after it. it. Let him go for it. Is, yeah. it, is, it, those, is it the Terra Enigma trilogy? That one? Or is everyone thinking it's the wrong That's one? That's one of them. All right, so Terra Enigma, um, Illusions of Gaia? No? Yes. Yeah, and then uh, right, Illusions of Gaia, Terra Enigma, and oh, Soul Blazer. He's got it. Oh. <laughs> I will leave it up to you guys. No, Lance. If you want him to win this, or no. if you want to mug him out. Whoever, whoever runs up here first can pick whatever they want. <laughs> oh, come on, cowards. <laughs> Free reign. Yeah. All right. Nobody wants to end games. <laughs> They're like, no, I'm not. Uh, okay, so collecting panel, video games. What, uh, what console has the biggest game library? Don't look at your phones. What console has the biggest game library? PS2. It is PS2. Do you know how many? Does anybody know how many uh, PS2 has? Yeah, it's at 30, uh, 3,857 times. Is that crazy? Like even the Wii, which is second place, only had something like 22. Are we talking North American only or worldwide? No, if you go worldwide, I think it's something like 10,000 on PS2. Absolutely insane. Uh, oh yeah, I didn't say I was giving away. Um, so, we've got... Base Wars, if you guys haven't played that on NES, I think that's awesome. Robots playing baseball can't get any better. Uh, this game, absolutely infuriating. I don't know how to play any one of the levels. Wood, Water, and Rage, uh, the, the uh, TNC Surf design. And then my favorite game, uh, one of my favorite games on the NES, that's Marble Madness. I absolutely love Marble Madness. Um, so, you can pick whatever you'd like, sir. Have okay. you had time? I can call it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, have, I have an easy one, right? I mean, this is like this is like the trivia for like when people are like you know, like you know, like when a girl's wearing a band shirt, it's like you need three songs. Like when people are like, oh, you know Mario? Uh, what's Mario Two actually called? There you go. So hokey pokey, hokey pokey Pinocchio. Yeah. So there you go. Doki Doki Panic. Good job. Congratulations. So. I have here a whole bunch of games that some are bad, really bad, and some are <laughs> all right. And, but they're all upside down, so you pick whichever one you want, and you never know what you're going to get. So, no? Yeah? Who? I, mean, I like <laughs> you won. I like how you're selling. <laughs> Man? Yeah. Man? Yeah. Man? I'm part of the panel. Okay. So well, I still get to all right, uh, you said it second, correct? Alright, come on and grab a mystery game. Who knows what you're gonna get? Ba, 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 this one's kinda cheating because you can see you it. You can see that one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I'll take that one. What was oh. it? What was it? What is Home it? Alone. Home Alone. Home Alone. Home Alone. That's one of the crappy ones. That's a congratulations. There's a lot more here, so to be honest, I think we almost have enough games for everybody that's in this room. That's so. actually true. Um, Maybe so, uh, you, guys have you, have a game. you guys have anything else before we do a Q&A? Uh, unless you want to share your, your pickup today. Well, what did you pick up today? Uh, I don't have it with me, but it's uh, the uh, Legend of Zelda Wind Waker for the GameCube, but it's the combo pack that comes with the Ocarina of Time uh, Master Quest disc. It's a, a really yes. rare, really a rare variant. Don't ask me how much That's I paid for it. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Uh, it's the only one. It's the only one I needed. I have a complete GameCube collection. That's not part of the complete set. It's just a variant to have. So. Oh, actually. I got one more before we do Q and A. What uh, what is a subset collection that you guys are all really focusing on? Uh, 
I kind of want to get into the DS and 3DS library. But, uh, but I'm also going for Sega Master System. I love the Sega Master System. It's a console a lot of people don't talk about. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of great games for it, especially in the PAL territory. And also, it's uh, the console is more powerful than the NES. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people know that or not. Um, the games have less glitches. I still like the NES better, don't get me wrong. There's no comparison. But uh, the Sega Master System is fun to play for. Well, it's not really a game, but uh, Nintendo Power. I don't know, there's, there's something about just collecting yeah. old Nintendo Power magazines. Uh, beyond that, maybe, uh, I think we... Oh, Square? Yeah, Square. Uh, I, 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 no, I gave up on that. <laughs> when, when they bought out Enix, it's like, oh, yeah, let's forget that. Uh, the Odyssey 2, though, because we, we picked up a huge lot, and it got like 75% of the library, so now it's just going through it and getting the last few games. And they have handles, too. <laughs> <laughs> Just like me, love handles. <laughs> you and me both did it. Uh, I, so, I have two subsets I'm going for. I'm going for GameCube Exclusives Collection, which was a mistake. Yep. Because yep. I still need stuff like Go Go Hyper Grind Chibi and Cubivore. Gotcha. And basically all the expensive shit. Um, and then I'm going for an OG Xbox exclusive set. Has anybody ever tried to collect for the OG Xbox exclusives? So just so you know, there's not actually a definitive list that exists. So there were so many games for the OG Xbox that were supposed to be on PlayStation 2. So when you look at a list as Xbox exclusives only, they're not on there because they shared uh, releases with the PS2 that were then canceled. So there's a lot of games uh, on the OG Xbox you can only play on it, and it does not either have a stamp on it that says OG Xbox, um, or they're just rare because they weren't, uh, they didn't produce much of them. But that's been, that's awesome. I'm eight games away from the OG Xbox exclusive set, and I'm 13 games away from the GameCube one. So wow. it's close. It's close. But now I need three grand to complete the rest of the <laughs> Uh, I, have, I have two subsets. One, like for sure, working design games. They're freaking beautiful. And I own every single one except for like three for the Turbo Graphics. And like each one of those is like $1,000. So we're done. I'm done. <laughs> unless <laughs> it's unless like some super generous like millionaire is like, ah, oh, here's Parasol Stars. Yeah, like it's not happening. Um, but like, so all the working design games, what's, what's cool about them, if you've ever collected or seen working design games, a lot of them like came with a bunch of crap. And like that's why they went out of business, right? So like I got um, like one of the PlayStation ones came with like a watch and an amulet and all this stuff. And then they had full colored hardback leather bound guidebooks with like stickers and stamps that you can put on your memory cards. And like I have all that stuff. It's super awesome. But the other thing that like I really collect for is my first RPG I ever had was Final Fantasy II, which is four for the people who know what's up. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. I have every single version of that game that exists. Wonder Swan, Color, all of them. It, yeah, and like all in box. I even have, there's a Game Boy Advance Micro that came out in Japan only. I have that thing like complete in box. So those, those are my two things. Working Designs and, and Final Fantasy 2, 4, whatever. I'll, I'm always going to call it 2, but yeah, that's, that's dedication. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, open it up to some Q&A. Uh, anybody have any questions at all for us? Every question gets Every, you know, you guys are all friends here, so if you haven't been able to ask us a question, if you need to do it in private, Robert, we can talk later. Yeah, okay, right. I understand. Anything? Got a dead room here. Oh, hey, what's up? Hey, um, Lord, you, uh, you mentioned uh, the Wind Waker variants. What are the Warrior stances on collecting variants or greatest hits versions or players' choice versions of games? Do you do that or you have to get the game regardless of what version it is? So uh, from like a collecting standpoint, I know a lot of people just go after Black Label. I'm just gonna use that as a general term for kind of like the first releases on stuff. But um, I actually prefer to get collector's editions um, or uh, or like a three year, four year out because all the DLC will be on it already. Um, or they already fixed bugs or you know patches, uh, so you don't have to deal with that. So I've always been a fan, especially when it comes to playing the games, of collecting like that. But that's my route. 
every time I see a green label on a PlayStation game, I throw up. <laughs> <laughs> the I greatest can't, hits? I can't, I can't do it. No, yeah, like, if it's a game that I'm, like, all about, and there's maybe a difference with the player's choice, I'll buy both. But, uh, I, yeah, personally, I can't. I can't. <laughs> like cover variants? Yeah, like yeah, it's like, you know, when you see the yellow on the GameCube, like, black, 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 yellow. You don't like the yellow? I think yellow is cool. I think red is the, the PlayStation. The worst one is, is 360. I think like a weird, they have a weird It's one. silver. It's well, like silver. And it's it, really ugly. Yeah. It's, it's called terrible. platinum. Yeah. Well, good. good job. <laughs> <laughs> good job. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, yeah, personally, I'm, I'm more of a, I try my best to, to not. Yeah. Actually, that's one that I always struggle with because I'm not so finicky uh, as, as, as like the labels for CDs. I mean, I I think maybe I kind of prefer to not have that colored spine, but I really get thrown for a loop whenever you start looking at something like an old 2600 game and you have five different covers for combat. You have one with label art, but then one with just text. It's oh, right. which, which do you keep? Yeah. Or uh, the Super Nintendo million seller games. The, the cartridge itself, it, instead of the original having more of that uh, concurve yeah. plastic to it, the million sellers have that, uh, you know, that. Yeah, it's a different, that, it's it's a different it has gold, gold, it has yeah. the gold uh, yeah. seal on it. So, yeah. do, you, do you keep both of those? Because it's like, well, the, the cartridge is physically different, even though the game is exactly the same. Right. So, I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm at a loss for that. So I'm a crazy GameCube collector, right? So my goal as a collector is to collect literally everything for the GameCube. I mean, eventually I'm even going to bust into Japan, the J Japanese games, the PAL games. I'm, I'm eventually I'm going to get into that too. So I have issues. Please send help. I need it. <laughs> uh, but no, so that's the only console that, that I'll collect variants for. I'm trying to get all Player's Choice games. Um, I can't find a definitive list of all the Player's Choice games. That's pretty tricky to do. Um, but I do have a lot. I think I've got like 75 Player's Choice games and I've got them all on, on a shelf so they look really nice next to each other. They're all mixed in with the black label games. Uh, but every other console, nah. I mean, I, I'll get either or, you know what I mean? I'm not picky about it. I just want the game to play it. But for GameCube, I'm, I'm a little out there when it comes to the GameCube. So. You're a lot out there. A lot out there. You have yeah. GameCube toilet paper. Yeah, I do. I, I actually do have GameCube toilet paper. That's not a lot. I haven't used it yet, so maybe one day. We'll see. What's GameCube toilet paper? It's a long story, man. It's a long story. You know, um, with a, uh, I was a little harsh on PlayStation, but I do have to give an example of what I was getting at. You know, the green labels do suck, but have you ever seen like Legend of Dragon? Right, the game's amazing. Have you ever looked at the discs? They're beautiful. They, each one has a different character full color for their character, right? Like darts, all red, you know, uh, it's just, they're all for their character. But when you get the player's choice one, not only do you get the green spine, the big, hey, you suck on the front, but each disc is in there and it has the art, but they're all black and white. They are, yeah. It's You're like, right. oh right. my yeah. God, it, I'm, just, yeah. I'm just saying, don't. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Good question, thanks, buddy. You, uh, yeah, you've had enough, sir. <laughs> no, <laughs> dang, <laughs> dang. Uh, Besides collecting, what do you guys, what system do you find yourself playing more than anything else? <laughs> God, what is it? Yeah. Uh, like when you play a game, what system most of the time? Well, the problem is, if I play a modern system, I have a couple hours, I'm excited, I turn it on, and then I wait an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm not excited anymore, yeah. and then I move on to something else. Um, but I probably throw in the most is 64. Where I love, uh, I love being nostalgic for the 64. Uh, like that's the the one under the Christmas tree that my mom was actually really awesome. So it's just a quick story. So I didn't have a Super Nintendo. I had a Sega Genesis. Like that was the childhood one. And I got a Super Nintendo the same year as I got a 64. So what happened is mom. I said, I want a Super Nintendo, I wanted to play Killer Instinct. I just thought, I, I was like, this is like, I was a fighting game fan, I thought this was gonna be awesome. So mom picks me up the Super Nintendo, and then Sears had, this is right when 64 was hard to get, Sears had like three, like sitting underneath like the, the shelf, and she looked at it, she was like, oh my God, that's 64, I know he's talked about it. So she snags one, and she has a coworker behind her in line, and like they were friends, and he had one set on hold. Like, and they sold her the last one. 
And so they're friends and they have a conversation. She still takes it home, but they end up having a conversation and she brings me aside and she goes, listen, huh, normally I wouldn't do this because it's a Christmas present, but we're gonna give that 64 away to him. That should have been his. And I cried. I was 12 years old and I went into the bedroom and I was like, I just wanna look at it one last time. <laughs> and I'm like holding the 64 in my hand. And so it was gone. And then Christmas day happens and I open up a Super Nintendo I'm stoked. And they go, we got one more gift for you. I'm like, what are you talking about, right? And they hand it to me, and I open it up, and it's a 64. Wow. And I was like, how? I thought you gave it to that guy. And I'm sorry for children. And she goes, fuck that guy. Like, he never got it. I never gave it to him. So it's just a badass story of a badass mom, like, trying to make Christmas awesome for a kid. So to this day, like, 64, just it matters for those reasons. So, yeah. Uh, what was the question? Uh, which console you play the most? Oh yeah, I answer. <laughs> uh, I usually find myself playing a lot of PS4. My wife and her sister like to watch a lot of games for the story, so I do that to entertain them. But I've actually been going back and played a lot of Sega Genesis. Growing up, I had a Super Nintendo, a buddy had a Genesis. There was no console war between us, but he only had a handful of games, so I've been going back and checking out all the games that I missed out. Dan, I want you to tell me what you yeah. think the answer is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that question is so peripheral. Yeah, right, exactly. Right. The Wii. It's all the Wii. He's like, uh, Dreamcast? <laughs> More? More? Yes. Does he not get to answer this? Oh, just, oh you're fine. Right. You weren't even supposed to be on this panel. That's true. <laughs> Where did you <laughs> How did you get here? Who are you? Digital only. <laughs> I have put over 600 hours into Fantasy Star Online too, and I don't feel good about that. <laughs> I, I seriously don't feel good about that. Um, in all honesty, like I, I probably played my Series X the most only because so I've moved like I'm from Florida and I've moved to Maryland, and it's the only way to really be with my friends from back home. But if you were to take that part out of it, because like it's not like I'm playing the Series X because I'm like, oh yeah, it's more Battlefield, like. Mm. And like if it's like, you know, the console that I play the most, like I really enjoy, it'd probably be Super Nintendo. Because yeah. Super Nintendo is the jams. I feel like shout out to Ocarina of Time though. Like that almost that game by itself almost eclipses in Super Nintendo. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean like technically for, for truthfulness it would probably actually be the series X, sadly. <laughs> I mean dude, Xbox Game Pass is awesome. Right it, absolutely so, it's a deal. Yeah. Doing good. Buy it today. <laughs> I'm a big Master System fan, and it's a big bit in general. So what is your, like, to the party trying to get some of it? What is the one that you are really looking for to get, and which one are you dreading to have to find? Uh, I think I'm missing, I'm missing a few of the Alex Kid games, and some of those are pretty hard to find. Yeah. Uh, but really, right now, uh, for right now, I've got pretty much all the Master System games that I want. I'm going to start dipping into the uh, the PAL territory at some point. I don't know a lot about the library other than there's a hell of a lot more games that came out in Europe for it, um, and a lot of really good ones. Um, I've got a friend that lives in uh, England, and he, he's a big Sega Master System guy, so he recommends a lot of games to me. But uh, I guess if I had to give you one, I would say uh, New Zealand Story. That's uh, I think it's pretty hard to find, and it's. And I, I hate that game, but uh, uh, for some reason I want it. I'm a masochist, I guess. I don't know. And there's two recommendations for PAL Master of Darkness. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Solid. Sweet. Thanks. So, going for like a lot of right? Obviously, you're a What is uh, your favorite piece that's not a game itself? Yeah. Game related still, or just any piece? Game related, just not yeah. a physical, like, yeah. Uh, not a console or a console? Console's cool, right? I don't know, you're pointing at me. Am I going to say the wrong thing? Uh, actually, some uh, we have like some craft stuff that people have made for us, and we have that in our room that they're gaming related, so it goes along really well with the collection. Uh, Russ Lyman painted us this fantastic Link to the Past picture. You guys are here and not at his panel. <laughs> but <laughs> stuff like that I, I really love because yeah. it, it really comes with much more of a story behind it. But it still has that gaming flair. GameCube toilet paper. <laughs> 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 no, uh, 
<laughs> no, uh, my answer is quick. And, uh, I have a sealed Resident Evil 4 chainsaw controller, and it's an awesome. You have one too? I got one too. Dude, it's yeah, an awesome display awesome. piece because people see it and they're like, what the hell is that? It's that it's awesome. Awesome. Yes. I will. Is, the, I will. is the GameCube one yellow? Yeah. 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 I have the PS2 one. <laughs> I saw that one. That looks awesome. Uh, okay, this is my favorite piece, and I sold it. So it's not my favorite piece anymore, because I'm done. Thank you, sir. He just came in, he was like, five minutes. Uh, so, uh, just like that. so I had, I'm a huge God of War fan. Like, I know a lot of people say that just because the new one came out. Like, I've loved God of War since its inception. And my red God of War PSP was like my, like, holy grail. Like, I thought that was the cool. And all it is is just a stupid vinyl, like, on the back of the PSP, and it's red shell. But I loved it. And I sold all of my PSP collection for a 2DS to play Mario Kart right when it first came out, and I kicked myself ever since. So I'm actually on the hunt. If you guys see it around the con convention, I need that God of War PSP back. Are you ready to be mad, Andy? Yeah. I sold a silver one for 360. I hate you right now. We are no longer friends. And this was a few days ago. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> so, this isn't like a, like a good answer, but like, per personally, you know, the, I want to say like fan art that I've been given, because it's just so cool, right? Like, people draw you. But like, if you take the fact that it's, that's personal to me as a content creator, and like, what's something cool in my game collection, I have the coolest thing. It's so cool. And you might, you probably don't think it's cool, but it's freaking awesome. You're wrong. It's super cool. It's so cool. Can we talk about it? I might. I'll do it right now. So I love Mega Man Legends. Like, Mega Man Legends is the best. If you don't think so, you're wrong. Mega Man Legends 1 and 2 are amazing. Tron Bond is too expensive. I will say that, but it's still great. Everyone who knows anything about Mega Man Legends, Mega Man Legends 3 got canceled. But there was a very short time period, like a week, where they had a Comic-Con somewhere. I think it was in New York, Comic-Con. And Capcom had official Mega Man Legends 3 project posters. And like I didn't even know they existed. And I found one on eBay that was misnamed. It was like Megan Man. And I was like, what's this poster? It's like Megan Man poster from uh, from Comic Con. And it was that poster and also a game called Mega Man Universe, which you also may or may not remember, but like it was supposed to have for you and all this stuff. And there was two posters and I've never seen them. Like I don't think they, you know, like, no one, there's no sold listings, it's like, there's no value for them. And I bought them for five dollars, and I was like, this is the coolest thing. So I have this Mega Man Legends 3 project poster, it even has an ESRB rating on it, and it's like, it's amazing, it's the, it's the coolest. That's awesome. Fra it's totally framed. <laughs> uh, we've got like three minutes left, so, any others? Yes. Yeah, uh, I want to know from each of you, what's the Black Sheep console? in your collection that either doesn't get played at all or collected for at all. What do you have to talk well, about? Okay, I already sold it recently because I hated it. I hate the 3DO with a passion. I can't stand that stupid console. Like the fact that you have to plug player two into player one's controller is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Like and I played Soccer Kid once and I hated it and that was it. Like but every game I've ever put in for the 3DO I'm not a fan. Including what was it, Zelda? Was it the uh, yes. one, one oh, it was a CDI. Yeah. Uh, then there's a game called PO'd. You yeah. guys remember PO'd? Uh, yeah, I, I I don't enjoy it, I don't enjoy the, the controller. So that one won't be in the collection anymore. Uh, funny enough, the CDI. I literally got that <laughs> just for the Zelda games yeah. and I if I find something super cheap for it, yeah sure, let's pick it up. But I don't oh, actively collect for it, I don't I don't. <laughs> I torture people with the Zelda games, but that's about it. Uh, this might make some of you mad, but the Atari 2600. If you don't like it, I can't get into it, I'm sorry. I just can't. That's it. What? Is that how I have an answer? Because you guys are no, I don't know. TurboGrafx-16. I just don't have one. Like, oh, that, that's why I'm <laughs> so not sure. That's awesome. But even if I did, the TurboGrafx-16 sucks. You could just be uh, Awesome. Guys, thank you very much for coming to our little panel. We're talking about video game collecting. Uh, we've got some freebies, some giveaways, some stickers, some fun stuff, too. Uh, if you guys haven't checked any of the YouTube channels out, go check it out. Uh, RetroWolf88. Uh, do you nerd Pac-Man case and blips and pips on YouTube? Send us a comment, say hello. Love to hear from you guys. Yeah. Thank you and good night. Thanks, guys.